Before starting this video, consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron. By supporting this channel, you'll have access to giveaways, a deck tech of your choice, and more. You can also join this channel's Discord server with the link down below. What's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pups on MTG. Glad to have you here. So recently, Wizards of the Coast made a product line for starter decks. These are going to be pretty cheap compared to the normal commander decks. What got me really excited for these commander decks is that they have new arts for all sorts of commanders in here. Most notably, and obviously you clicked on this video, I'm going to be going over a Tarker World Render. So a little backstory before getting into this video. I got into Magic around 2015, 2016, and that's where the Tarkir block was around. In high school, I saw people play Magic the Gathering, but I never got really into it because I was more into sports. But after I graduated high school, and when I was going to college, I went to Target one day just to get something. I was getting a gift card for somebody, and right next to the gift cards were these Magic the Gathering packs. I distinctly remember seeing three packs with a front-facing card on it. It was a Tarker World Render. Growing up, I absolutely loved fantasy, like watching The Hobbit or watching Game of Thrones. So seeing this art on here was absolutely breathtaking and something I never really noticed before in my life. So I would say little by little, I got into Magic the Gathering here and there, going to some events here and there, and I absolutely had a blast and enjoyed a lot of it. And obviously later on making this YouTube channel, as you can see. So I definitely have a big side spot for a Tarker world render but what does it read it has flying and trample and whenever a dragon you controls attacks it gains double strike until end of turn so pretty straightforward it's a dragon tribal commander but an absolutely powerful one as well so because this is the first card I've ever seen in Magic the Gathering I want to do a giveaway myself for this deck so in order to participate in getting this draconic destruction starter commander deck you got to subscribe and comment down below if you're wondering what kind of comment to put down below I do have a simple question of what got you into magic for me it was definitely the art especially with the Tarka that got me into magic so because it is the Christmas season if you win this deck you could either keep it for yourself or because it's Christmas you could give it to somebody else kind of the gift that keeps on giving so that if someone is introduced to magic this will be a great deck for them to start out with so with that out of the way this is going to be more of a deck tech and upgrade of that specific deck so we want to talk about the essentials of a dragon deck because they are heavily costed in a lot of different ways and also we want to make sure we can protect our dragons and we give some good board presence as well so because we are in gruel colors we want to make sure that we ramp efficiently so we have cards like three visits nature's lore far seek and sky shroud claim which are all perfect to utilize that ramp plus what I would say would be the best factor of having these compared to other ramp spells is the fact that they search for non basic lands for example for three visits you can search for a forest card so that means any kind of forest as long as there's a forest in there you can even search for a triumph if you really wanted to but most likely we're gonna be searching for stomping ground because it does have that dual typing of mountain and forest not only do we want to focus on ramping we want to make sure that we protect what we ramp for because we ramped heavy into dragons we want to make sure we protect them because because it always sucks whenever someone has like a two mana removal spell for an eight cost dragon. So in order to protect our dragons, we can use a card like Tamiyo Safekeeping and Heroic Intervention. They're essentially the same, giving your permanent or permanence hexproof and indestructible. I honestly do find it hard to believe that Tamiyo Safekeeping is a common. Also another part of having a awesome dragon deck is having removal, especially mass removal like board wipes. Because it'll take a long time for our dragons to enter the battlefield, we want to make sure the board is clear so that we could take to the skies. Cloth's Will will definitely get us there as it deals X damage to each creature without flying or destroy up to X target artifacts or enchantments. And if you control your commander, you get to do both. So that's a win right there. Also, the more creatures your opponent have, the better Blasphemous Act will be because it'll deal 13 damage to each creature. Absolutely great board wipe in here. Absolute all-star. So these essentials are really great and all, but we want to make sure we get to draw them by getting a lot of card draw. Garrick's Uprising is absolutely fantastic in this because not only does it give you card draw equal to the great power among non-human creatures you control it also does give you an overrun effect if you have a lot of dragons on the field you might as well swing in for a lot of damage there as a game ender another similar card to bring up is Rishkar's expertise you draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control so same exact thing as return of the wild speaker but it also does have a great stipulation of you may cast a spell with a mana value five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost so after you draw all those cards you get to put a free thing onto the battlefield as well another great one-time use card draw spell would be Hunter's Insight. Choose a target creature you control whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker this turn. Draw that many cards. Because a Tarka does have double strike, you can essentially
essentially draw 12 cards with her just for three mana. Absolutely absurd with this card. I love this card a lot for that reason alone. Aside from instant and sorcery spells, we want to make sure we get consistent card draw. So I thought of adding greater good to this deck because it is an enchantment. You could continuously do this. We have a lot of beefy dragons to sacrifice. So yeah, you are discarding three cards, but you're drawing a lot more cards out of that. So I feel like this outweighs its negative for sure. Another essential part of dragons is that you want to make sure that you have a lot of haste enablers. So Rhythm of the Wild will get you there. Not only is it a headache for those blue players out there so that your creatures can't get countered, but it does also provide us a way to get haste. And also, if you already have a haste enabler out, you might as well give them a 1-1 counter instead of giving them haste because of Riot. Fires of Yavimaya is another really great card in here because you want to give your dragons haste. And if you want to get those extra points of damage, you might as well sacrifice Fires of Yavimaya so you can get your creatures plus two, plus two until end of turn. And if they do have double strike, that'll even mean more damage on top of that. So absolutely great include in here as well. Another really great haste enabler to bring up in this deck is Dragon Tempest. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it gains haste until end of turn. So another great haste enabler, but it also has some other really great effects as well. It has whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player whenever X is the number of dragons you control. So obviously the more dragons you have on the field, the better this card will be for sure. The last haste enabler I do want to mention is Xenagos God of Revels. Way back when I first started this channel, he was actually my first official deck tech. And he was actually my first commander that I've ever built. So this is a really great card in this deck because at the beginning of your combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and gets X plus X until end of turn where X is that creature's power. So before I did mention those card draw abilities, imagine that doubled with Xenagos God of Rebels. I can't believe how much damage this guy produces for me every time I play him. Also, what's really great about Xenagos is that if you pump up a Tarka World Render, your commander, it'll be a 1210, which means it'll have double strike and then it'll deal 24 damage to a player. So essentially with one swing with your commander, you could potentially wipe out somebody from the game because of Xenagos buffing up your commander. So out of all the cards in this deck, this is the highest recommended card I would put in the deck for sure. So let's move along to some Planeswalkers to add into the deck. Obviously Sarkin is the Dragon King. He works best with dragons just like Targaryens. So we have cards like Sarkin Fireblood, Sarkin the Masterless, and Sarkin Vol. With Sarkin Fireblood I like him especially because a lot of our dragons are beefy so adding two mana of any combination just to cast our dragons is perfect for the deck. Sarkin the Masterless is absolutely great in this deck. I like him a lot in here because he can make a dragon too protect himself and on top of that his stack ability is really great especially the more dragons we have on the battlefield say for example we have five dragons on the battlefield and there's a creature with a power and toughness of five five with sarkin's ability each dragon we control will deal one damage to that creature essentially killing it on the spot another planeswalker i did want to mention briefly is dominary anarchabolus he acts as an anthem giving our creatures plus one plus zero and being a mana dork and our creature spells can't be countered as well also providing a way to remove creatures from the board as long as our dragons are bigger than their creatures. So you're probably thinking to yourself, where are all the dragons? I talked about all these other stuff like the fluff of the deck, but where are the actual dragons I want to add into the deck? So your patience was rewarded and now I'm going to talk about some of the dragons you should have in the deck. Because the Tarka grants all dragons we control double strike, we want to make sure we have a lot of dragons on the battlefield. That means we want to go wide with tokens. A big and nasty dragon that I've seen take over games multiple times is Udvara Hellkite. The more dragons you swing with this guy, the more dragons you're going to produce. So say for example, you swing in with five dragons. That means you're going to get an additional six, six red dragon creature tokens on the battlefield as well, which is absolutely absurd. So the multiplier effect with this card is absolutely insane in my opinion. I also did want to mention Lathless Dragon Queen as well. Whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a five, five red dragon creature token with flying. Also giving a nice pump to our dragon dragons as well is perfect because the more power we do have for our dragons, the more double strike damage we will have for a Tarka. I thought I would also mention Dragon Broodmother as well because at the beginning of each, yeah again that's right, each upkeep put one, one, one red and green dragon creature token with flying and devour two in play. So of course we're trying to enhance our board more with dragons so I think that's a great option as well. I also do want to provide you some dragons that absolutely hold your opponents hostage. Hellkite Tyrant is fantastic in this deck because when 
whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get to gain control of all artifacts that player controls, and it does have a game winning condition. If you have 20 or more artifacts, you win the game. Even if you took out that game winning ability, I just love taking people's mana rocks because we have a heavy costed deck with a lot of big dragons, so taking their mana rocks will help us in the end game for sure. I also thought of adding Cloth Unrivaled Ancient because it acts as a great mana ritual ability. The more power we swing with, the more mana we are going to get to cast our spells. If you do want another way of card draw, we do have Null Spine Dragon. When it comes into play, you may discard your hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. So very similar to Hunter's Insight, but we get a body on top of that. But we get to potentially get a lot of card draw off this card the more dragons we swing with and deal damage with. Another insane dragon to add to the list would be Scourge of the Throne. It'll grant us an additional combat phase, which is absolutely fantastic in this deck because we want to definitely amplify that damage around the table. Speaking of extra combat, we're going to get into our combo of the deck. We simply have cards that produce us extra combats and then ways that we could get extra mana. So if we use, for example, Hellkite Charger or Aggravated Assault, we could pay those mana stipulations and get an extra combat. But in order to get the extra combat, we need to make sure we have enough mana to sink into those creatures. So we could use cards like Old Gnawbone, Ancient Copper Dragon, and Savage Vent Maw. Depending on the situation and depending on the scenario, these will help us provide the mana in order to get infinite combats. I will use Aggravated Assault and Old Gnawbone as an example here. If you swing with Old Gnawbone, you will get seven treasures off of Old Gnawbone's ability, and then you can dump that into Aggravated Assault's ability for five mana, getting untapped creatures, and then going for another combat. And because Old Gnawbone is swinging again, it'll gain that much more treasure again. And so that you can keep on dumping that into Aggravated Assault, gaining infinite combats that way. There can be cases to be made for the other cards not to get infinite combats though. For example, Ancient Copper Dragon, it could roll a one and then you could only get one treasure off that. So that is a warning right there. Also with Savage Vent Maw, say for example, you want to dump that mana into Hellkite Charger. You only get the allotted combats allowed as long as you have enough mana to provide for that. So just to forewarn you right there, I just want to make sure this is pretty clear, but let me know down below what your thoughts are about Atarka World Render. I know this commander is pretty old, but I find it really fun to play every time that I helm her as my commander. So again, I want to thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video. Sorry it's a little longer video. I just had to mention the giveaway because I do want to give one lucky viewer a chance to win that starter deck so that they could either keep it for himself or give it to another person as a gift. So to be entered, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and definitely put a comment down below. So with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.